Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to share five packages, five interesting node packages, which I found out from the source code of CodeDAM and wanted to share in this video with you. Now, these packages are not exhaustive or just the only five we use, obviously, but these are the first few which I found on the first glimpse being interesting and something which probably a lot of people don't know about. So let's take a look at these five packages which we also use in CodeDAM in production today. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. The first package is Joey and I believe I have mentioned this a lot of times in the backend video, in web security video, in a lot of videos that this package is a must have absolutely necessary package if you are implementing anything which requires a lot of data input from the user because you can define very strict schemas of data which you're expecting from your REST API or from your GraphQL endpoint or anything and then validate whatever data is coming in against that schema. So sure, I mean, in JavaScript, it's easy to write a scenario where you want to test whether a variable is a string or a number or so on but a lot of times it's more than that you don't just don't want it to be a string but you want it to be an alphanumeric string within a certain limit and you want it to be present similarly for password you might want a certain check similarly for repeat password like it says and you might be accepting this as a complete object and you might have multiple endpoints in your website where you are mentioning a lot of or where you're receiving a lot of similar data or different data this stuff becomes complex super quick when you're working on a medium to large size application and the first rule of web development the first rule of web security rather is never trust user data all user data is evil so joey should probably sit as the first step between your processing and the place where the API sends the data to the backend. So you should pretty much never touch any user data before it has been sanitized and it has been passed through a Joey schema. So like a, it's, it's probably a very important library for any backend project. And of course, you can download Joey from npm, npm install Joey and use joey.dev as a documentation place. Now, of course, this is not a dedicated Joey video, so we are not going to be discussing about how to work with it, but it's relatively simpler to get started. The next library which we also use, which is very useful, but a very small one, is this tiny invariant. Now, what this library is, is that if you have ever used TypeScript, you know that a lot of times TypeScript would complain that your value might be undefined or falsy or null, where you would see that error object may be undefined or object may be null. Now, a lot of times it is possible that you know for sure that the object is not null because of a status flag or something else which is related, but you might not be able to show that to TypeScript. Now, you just have two options then. The first option is that you force cast it using the exclamation mark in TypeScript. Or the second option is you use a package like invariant, which is pretty much like saying that, hey, I'm so much confident that my type or my variable exists that I'm willing to just blow up my program if it does not exist on the runtime. So it's almost like an assert statement, but it's used a lot with TypeScript code bases where you just say, I mean, in this case, it says, condition but it's it's completely fine with just a regular value as well for example you can just import this package invariant and write something which is undefined or string and the moment you do that in the next line from that point typescript would not complain that it's undefined right because this line typescript recognizes that if it is in fact undefined this code it's gonna throw an error so that's something the third library which we use is from dropbox and this is named as zx cvbn and i have no idea why this is named in this way but what this library is is that it allows you to add a nice password strength dialog box on your websites now even if you go to code dam right now on the registered part you're gonna see we have a little helper when you start typing in for the password when you start typing hello this 
little help years down the line which tells you that this is a vulnerable password or this is a relatively weaker password you can see this is a very common password and you also get a strength now all of this is happening offline you are not sending any data online or you're not sending this password to any password checker or anything this is a lightweight library which helps you compute all of that information. So if you're somebody who's implementing a registration with password, with emails, I believe this is an important library to have because even though you do have hashing at backend and you are storing it with bcrypt or some hashing algorithm, still it's important for users to have a bit of secure password just for their own goodness and just for their own sake. So this is an interesting library from Dropbox which you have seen works flawlessly and I mean it's just working fine so why not just use it and um, we are also using this on production so if you have any other libraries which you're using or if you have any other suggestions you're most welcome to tell them but this is probably I think it's, it's a good choice. Uh, that, that's what I believe. The only problem with that package as you would have seen is that it was way too old. It was not updated at all. And if you go down into the issues a bit, you're going to see that there is a better well-maintained package which is hosted over here which is basically the same thing but it's a complete internals rewrite of the zx CVVN package and you can get started with it with the documentation linked in the github readme so it's one of the packages which we are using at codedam and it's it's really effective way of basically just letting people choose a stronger password another package which we use a lot is this nano id package and you would have seen a lot of nano ids at codedam in the url structure so anytime there's a new video a new article a new course item you're gonna see the unique identifier in that course item is basically a nano id and this is just a package which generates a tiny secure url friendly unique string identifier now i mean you would still find a lot of functions basically generating them for you online but it's based it's, it's easier and it's more better choice to have a package like nano id because it comes up with a few advantages in terms of speed in terms of safety in terms of url friendliness and so on so earlier we used to use uuid as a generator but shifted to nano id because for us uuid was way too long and nano id made perfect sense because it uses well less characters first of all and less length which was ideal for us for generating these unique identifiers one such example you can see over here is that when you generate something like this you're gonna get a string like this which is 100% URL safe so it does not contain any special characters question marks hash symbols nothing like that and it just works so it's easy to just plug into your system and forget about it and finally ending the video on a lighter note one interesting package which you also use which you might have seen if you complete a lab or a project on codam is you get a nice little confetti effect and the way we do that is with this canvas confetti package which is a great package it's just it's just something you have to install and programmatically call with javascript and i'm gonna get these nice effects automatically you can see you can basically customize a lot of confetti effects and they look nice i mean when you're working with them if you want to show user a little bit of appreciation for something they did or they completed a task or a milestone or a challenge this might be a good package to plug in so yep that was the five package list out of a lot of packages which we use at codam i found that these were a few packages which were not probably known by a lot of people so there you go if you like this video make sure you leave a like and comment below let me know which one is your favorite package and if i missed out obviously i missed out tons of packages but which are top one or two packages which you like as a developer that's all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of codedamp's discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching